Alan Wake 2 is an amazing looking game that absolutely had our jaws on the floor when it launched in October of 2023. While we loved the game back then, we still of course saw some minor areas at its launch that we would love to have seen improved over time if possible with patches. So I was quite delighted when Remedy contacted us offering a preview build of an upcoming patch to the game. This patch, which should be releasing on March 6th, is looking to optimize the game further for older GPUs that lack mesh shaders, and hopefully it should in turn allow more people to enjoy this awesome game even if they have old GPUs. With this build in hand, I thought it would be a great opportunity to cover how older GPUs fare now with the game and in general report on any major technical differences that I have noticed since last year's launch. And that is exactly where I want to start with this video, as I noticed some differences versus the launch version right in the game menu. At launch, the graphical options were powerful for tweaking, but they lacked transparency. As of the patch on January 31st, now nearly all of the options in the game have preview images, which give you a sense of what the graphical options will do to specific graphical elements on screen. Alongside this, and the fact that the background rendering is still visible while you are in the menu, you can judge the game's graphical changes more easily while adjusting settings. This is something I want to see every game do out there, so I'm happy that Remedy has taken the time to adopt this style of graphical menu settings. It really does help players know what they're going to be changing in menus, instead of them having to seek out areas of the game and test it manually with back and forth comparisons. So really good stuff there. But beyond that, on a technical level, you're looking at a very similar level of user experience to the launch version of Alan Wake 2. There are gameplay changes there, like the chapter select and less bugs, but that falls out of the scope of this technical video. Beyond this, I was curious how much GPU performance changed for modern GPUs since launch. For Ampere-based GPUs like the RTX 3070, I did not notice any large differences in performance versus that which I measured at launch when using rasterized settings as we can see here with those PS5 performance mode settings. Just margin of error differences here, more or less. But when I tested with Ada Lovelace GPUs, I noticed some healthy upticks in performance there. Take the RTX 4070 for example in that same scene with those same rasterized settings. I saw a nearly 14% performance improvement than the launch version here with the same view. With path tracing, that same scene shows a 6% performance improvement over the launch version. Some of this may be down to drivers, but the patch notes also do mention improvements here for path tracing. I similarly measured improved performance on the RTX 4090 when maxed out in this scene here. So there does seem to be a nice gain on Ada Lovelace RTX 4000 GPUs. So that's how it shakes out on more modern GPUs. Some better, some more the same. The real big reason though why I'm making this video is due to this patch changing technicals under the hood to increase the game's compatibility and performance on those GPUs which lack mesh shaders. For those of you who do not know, mesh shaders are a DX12 Ultimate tier hardware feature supported by any RTX GPU and RDNA 2 Plus GPUs, as well as Intel Arc GPUs. These mesh shaders give developers greater control about how much geometry is rendered on screen at any given moment. They potentially allow for a better level of detail and much higher quality game geometry than seen in the past without mesh shaders. Alan Wake 2 definitely shows this off I would say with some absolutely ridiculously high quality assets in the game that will hold up very well at close camera distances. Now at launch and until this most recent patch that I'm testing here, when you booted the game with a DX12 GPU that lacked mesh shaders, you got this warning that the game will have poor performance and it may have rendering errors as well. In practice for older GPUs like the GTX 1060 that we're seeing here on screen, it meant wildly unstable performance that was comically poor. Even at 1080p FSR2 quality mode with PS5 performance mode settings, the GTX 1060 ran the game typically below 20 FPS with most areas running around 15 FPS usually. The frame rate is so low that it affects game speed and audio playback. Have a listen. The Mind Place. My version of the Mind Palace technique. To sift through clues and work the case. Building the Mind Place again for each case. Using each field office as a model in my head. So it was not a great experience on GPUs like this, and I would say they were unsupported at this point. So how does this new patch improve the experience for such a GPU? 
let me concentrate first on Pascal GPUs, which are by far the most popular GPU still being used with that lack DX12 ultimate support for mesh shaders. And I'll start with that GTX 1060 again, as it sets an interesting baseline for what you can expect at a minimum. In your average run of the mill gameplay at the same settings that I showed off earlier of just walking around the forest with Saga, I measured a rather impressive 45% average frame rate increase above the previous patch. These areas where you take control over Saga in the forest tend to be the heaviest areas in the game, and seeing this performance improvement here without mesh shaders, in spite of the incredibly dense geometry, is really great and something I would not have expected just a few months back. Though these forest areas are the heaviest areas in the game for those GPUs that support mesh shading, Pascal GPUs actually saw even greater issues in the mine place, like where we see here that the GTX 1060 par for par runs nearly three times the frame rate that it did pre-patch. Once again, an incredible uptick in performance here. Interestingly, this 45% improvement on the 1060 that I show in the Forest Walk benchmark is actually the lowest end gain for the entire Pascal stack of GPUs that we tested with the help of my friend and colleague Richard Ledbetter. For the GTX 1070, this walk in the forest brought the frame rate up from around 21 FPS at any one given moment to around 33 FPS on average, which is an average frame rate increase of 57%. At these settings, for example, that puts the now 8-year-old GPU that is the GTX 1070 in playable territory with this game. You can get a reasonable 30 FPS now with this GPU, and that was not possible at all before. For the GTX 1080, the gains are even greater. Pre-patch this walk through the forest averaged just shy of 26 frames per second. With the new patch, it averages around 48 frames per second through the entire bench sequence, and as such has an 85% performance increase over the pre-patch configuration. Once again, this is a huge boost in playability. We were talking about unplayable performance before, to now having acceptable performance on a VRR monitor or a potential 40 FPS cap. Starting to see a trend here though? The bigger the GPU, the more it benefits from this patch, and we can see that at the top of the totem pole with the GTX 1080 Ti. Pre-patch at the settings tested, this bench showed an average frame rate of 28 FPS. The 1080 Ti was running sub 30 FPS here, even at these kind of low settings. Once again, unplayable territory, I would argue. With the patch applied, the average frame rate of the entire benchmark walking sequence is 57 FPS. This is showcasing a greater than two times frame rate uplift versus the previous performance. It went from sub 30 to a, an honestly awesome 60 FPS VRR experience at the same settings. So Pascal GPUs are much improved with this new patch, and I was curious now, what is the new bottom level GPU performance that you need for Alan Wake 2? So I went back to the GTX 1060 I showed earlier, that was of course still sub 30 FPS with this new patch at 1080p FSR 2 quality mode. It had made great strides versus the pre-patch version, but I would still call that below playable. And I wanted to see what level of resolution reduction might be required to hit a consistent 30 FPS. And for that GPU, I found out rather quickly that actually no level of resolution reduction is going to help it out greatly. Even at very low resolutions like 720p or sub 720p or even Super Nintendo level resolutions like FSR2 Ultra Performance Mode 720p, you would still see obvious frame time spikes and drops below 30 FPS on the 1060. So ridiculously low resolutions where the GPU was realistically not pixel shader bound anymore would still have big issues with frame times. The GTX 1060 just cannot hack it for this game here, in spite of the improvements. Here I imagine some other aspect of the GPU's performance profile is causing large frame time instabilities that make a consistent 30 FPS experience not really possible. Dipping back further into the Nvidia catalog of legacy GPUs, Rich also tried out a GTX 970 for laughs. Now first a little warning on screen here for flashing for those who are sensitive to it, but yeah, Taking performance out of the equation, the GTX 970 has huge visual errors here that I barely want to show on screen. So based on our performance testing, I would say the lowest baseline Pascal GPU that can now play Alan Wake 2 is the GTX 1070, which as I showed earlier, can do a competent 30 FPS with something like PS5 performance mode settings at 1080p FSR 2 quality mode. Other higher end Pascal generation GPUs though can manage much more. As I said earlier, the 1080 Ti can now do a pretty competent 60 FPS VRR experience at those settings. 
but it can also actually do more. When placed against the PS5 at the same settings target and 1440p output like the PS5 in the heaviest area of the game that we have found, we can see that all Pascal cards, of course, fall short of that PS5 performance target. The GTX 1080 can just about manage this output res with a 30 FPS cap, but I would still recommend reducing internal res here to make the experience completely consistent. The 1080 Ti though would be perfect for a 30 FPS cap in this game, and honestly could even manage a great 40 FPS cap for nearly every other area in the game, as once again I am testing the heaviest area that exists that we have found. As a bit of perspective here, here is how more modern RTX GPUs with mesh shaders compare to the 1080 Ti. The 4060 is 37% faster, 2070 Super is 35% faster, and even the lowly 3060 is 22% faster. It just goes to show you how important hardware like mesh shaders are for performance. Modern day low end GPUs like the 3060 are trouncing high end GPUs of yesteryear just because of hardware features. So all in all, this new patch dramatically increases the viability of Pascal GPUs to play this game. But what about other non-mesh shading GPUs? The RX 580, which is the competitor to the GTX 1060 and GTX 1070, well, I wish I could report better things, but I cannot. Even with the latest patch, this GPU has big issues, mainly with crashing in my experience. It'll bring up this error message while just trying to get to play the game. It can sometimes run with performance way below a GTX 1060, but it is just far too crashy and doesn't really work. It's hard to be upset though, as this GPU is not even getting parity driver updates anymore from AMD, so it's kind of end of life to a degree. So what about RDNA 1 cards? They launched after truing GPUs with less features, but they still could kind of play this game at launch, and the patch has slightly improved the experience there. I measured the average frame rate performance being around 2% better in the latest patch on an RX 5700 at 1080p FSR2 quality mode when doing the benchmark run in the forest. As you can see via the average FPS, RDNA 1 actually had okay performance in this game without the patch. It was above 30 FPS, so kind of playable there. The real issue I noticed though is in the frame times, and I can see that visually as well as in the right hand side graph there. The patch helps a little bit here, but the frame times still periodically spike up to 30 or 60 milliseconds or so when you walk around the world. This gets in the way of the game's fluidity, and I think it makes the game look very uneven visually, even though the average frame rate is fine enough. I would still say RDNA 1 here needs more work, but that is definitely a question of returns that Remedy will get for that. There are so few RDNA 1 cards out there in comparison to RTX or GTX cards, so maybe them investing engineering time in these GPUs is not necessarily worth it, even though I would like to see it happen. So overall, I would say we have some nice wins since launch, and some greater wins with this most recent patch on Pascal GPUs, which now have a greatly enhanced level of playability, and you can now play the game on something like a GTX 1070. The game is in a much better place overall, but even as I say that, there are a couple things that I still wish Remedy could change before they start to move on to other projects. The first two things I wish they could change are in the graphics menu. At the moment, there's only a simple V-Sync toggle here. I would like to see the ability to lock the game at one half, one third, and one fourth refresh rates, so that users with GPUs like the GTX 1070 can get a consistent 30 FPS experience without having to rely on external programs. I would also like to see FSR 3 frame generation. The game has DLSS 3 frame generation, and it goes without saying that FSR 3 would be a benefit to many, many GPUs. The last thing I would like to see are changes to frame time consistency and, well, stutter. As my archived footage shows of the game at launch, at launch the game ran its pre-rendered cutscenes flawlessly with a perfect frame time cadence of 33.3 milliseconds per frame for 30 FPS videos. So each frame of a video file will display two times in a 60 Hz container and look smooth. When I played the game this time in the most recent patch on that same PC at the same settings, I saw frame times being inconsistent in the same pre-rendered cutscenes leading to a herky-jerky look where one frame persisted on screen much longer than the following frames and it kind of goes on repeat. I'm not sure what could be causing it, but I think video playback is less consistent now and less smooth 
than the version of the game at launch even on massive PCs. And the last thing I would love to see changed on PC is actually a small thing in the intro cutscene of the game before you take control of Saga. On PC specifically with path tracing on, there's a very large pause when it switches over to real-time rendering that has been there since the launch version, and it isn't there on other versions of the game. It happens every time you play the game, so it doesn't appear to be shader cache related, and it is something that I would really like to be fixed, as this game is otherwise very smooth, and that is one small blemish. But other than that, Alan Wake 2 is in a great place, and I'm happy that Remedy gave us this preview patch to check out how much performance has been improved on Pascal GPUs. The game is better than the launch version, and I hope you can check it out if you have not already. I really highly recommend this game, even if you have something like a GTX 1070, just so you can experience it. If you did like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. Support us on Patreon to get content like this in high quality. Comment below, follow on Twitter, as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell, and auf Wiedersehen!